Here we go. It is June 26th, my 57th day on trail. Back here is Monarch Pet Crest store and uh, visitor center. Just got out of Salida this morning. A trail angel named Debbie brought us back up here, so thank you, Debbie, very kind. Um, yeah, check out the the hiker center that they've put in the Monarch Crest area. They've done a lot to try to help out hikers. There's a nice area in the back you can drop packs, a changing area, a lot book, all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, if you're coming through, definitely go say hi to those guys. Because of the very high snow year in Colorado, a lot of hikers that didn't want to deal with that flipped up to Canada and started heading south because Glacier and Montana had a very low snow year. But I started to meet up with a lot more CDT hikers here because some of the ones that wanted to stay northbound took the Great Divide bicycle route, and that rejoins the main, quote, red line of the CDT near here. So I started seeing quite a few, quite a few more hikers. Here's camp for the night. So there's this, uh, you can't see it very well through this brush, <clears throat> but there's this very long flat graded path that's also temporarily a stream. And there was a sign back there that mentions that this was an old railroad line that used to go to Denver. So that's kind of neat. So I'm kind of on like a unexpected almost rail trail stream which i was not expecting to have in the collegiate west when i think of collegiate west i think of really big mountains after the very high difficulty of the san juans this area just felt so much more uh, simple i guess because it's very popular there's a lot more people that use these areas and the snow is really starting to disappear it is June 27th, my 58th day on the trail. Beautiful view. You can see Hermit there. Um, he passed me this morning while I was backing up. But I just went up a kind of confusing snowy um, traverse over the uh, Alpine Tunnel. It used to be an old train tunnel, I believe, that collapsed. But now I'm in an area that has a little bit more uh, obvious trail so I can kind of play connect the dots and um, also kind of follow Hermit's footprints so uh, tiny bit of rain last night just very light and scattered <clears throat> but um, it's supposed to be a beautiful day it's really been cloudy but the sun's fighting its way out and there's a lot more blue sky than there was so It's a really windy day and the wind's coming out of the sort of southwest, which I'm on the uh, protected side of the mountains right now of the actual divide. But I know that according to the guide, I go onto the other side and onto the ridge for miles. So I expect it to be crazy windy, but it's a pretty day, lots of post tolling and definitely not done with steep traverses. This one's fairly high consequence. At this point, I had to climb up and over the mountain range I was on onto the west side, and the views were great, but the wind was coming from this direction, and it almost blew me over multiple times. It was pushing me into the mountainside, and thankfully not off of it. There's finally a tiny break in the wind. It's been vicious, but this western traverse is gorgeous. You might be able to see the trail on that ridge. So I kind of follow this traverse and then it goes back up onto the actual divide.
Spruce Texas Creek. You can see that with all the snow melting, it's quite turbid and violent. But there's no bridge, and the trail goes that way. So, I'm gonna at least try it. There's nothing else I can do, so fingers crossed. Well, made it. Definitely a little wet. I got my shorts 100% wet, but that's mostly because the water was hitting my legs and like shooting up. Um, yeah, it's a strong current. That's the strongest I've had to do, hopefully the whole time. There's a lovely campsite, less than 100 feet from the water. Nice flat spots, logs to sit on, a fire ring, which I'm not going to have. It's called the day. There had been a lot of talk about Lake Ann Pass holding one of the biggest remaining challenges with the snow, with a big cornice at the top going down a, a very steep and pretty dangerous snow slope. These views were to the south, climbing up till this point. So this is a big cornice, and it's probably about six feet tall. Um, it's melting, but slowly. And this was way steeper than it looks here. Uh, you can see there's some rocks down at the bottom, but it's pretty run out. You're not likely to hit things down there. And I heard some folks talk about trying to walk around and down over where those rocks are, but I ended up going for the slide right in the middle. This ended up being my only butt slide of the entire trip, where I was able to stand my feet for everything else. Well, I made it. So I took the cornice straight on right at the, the center there. And I used my whip it to slow myself, but I did one continuous butt slide. All the way down to here with that block between my legs. That was wild. It was actually really fun, but of course a little scary. I ended up picking up so much speed that that watermelon-sized snowball got built in my crotch because I was using my heels to try to slow myself down as I went, but all of that snow was kind of building up. So that experience was pretty wild. It was a, a probably the scariest descent that I had to do the whole time. But after that, it started to get much more spring slash early summer. So the last meter hurdle I had to do was to get up here, which was Hope Pass, and the snow has gone off this. So that over there, the tallest thing underneath the clouds is Mount Elbert. That's the highest mountain in Colorado and the second highest in the lower 48, just slightly shorter than Mount Whitney in California. Looks like it might be a steep descent, but you can see the two Twin Lakes over there. So the town of Twin Lakes is kind of just behind that near rise. The fish here are going crazy. They're jumping all the way out of the air to strike at bugs. My first thought seeing all this was how awesome it would be to fly fish this, but there's signs all over the place talking about it being government property because it's part of a, a hydroelectric dam that generates power. So after this, I had a few mile road walk into the tiny town of Twin Lakes where there's a very, very accommodating little general store, a couple food trucks, and all this stuff caters to hikers, both CDT, Colorado Trail, and people just out enjoying the Mount Elbert area. This is the intersection where you can either follow the Continental Divide and Colorado Trail that away, or you can take the Mount Elbert Trail, which goes up the tallest mountain in Colorado, which is the second highest point in the lower 48. And then there is a trail that goes down the northeastern side. So there isn't supposed to be any thunderstorms. So I'm gonna head up there I'll check the radar before I leave the tree line and hopefully go up and over.
I had the thought while I was up here that unless there was anybody on the summit of Mount Whitney right at that moment, out of a country of over 330 million people, I was the highest person in the non-Alaska area. And actually, it's very unlikely that people are up that high in Alaska, too, because it's still so wintry. But it's kind of a cool thing, besides all the uh, airplane cheaters. This little dude is super tame. He's probably six feet away from me. But he's going nuts on trying to find something in there. The next place I passed was the ski resort of Copper Mountain, which was a really cool spot. There's lots of mountain bike trails and things, which seemed really fun, although the CDT and the mountain bike trails overlap, so you had bikes coming up on you really fast from behind, which was less than ideal. But the last little patch of snow with all the park kids enjoying it. So I passed two folks that camped at the campsite last night, I'm assuming. And their packs are enormous. And I was like, man, what are you bringing? And it makes a lot more sense. I thought there were three of them. I only passed two. It makes a lot more sense if they are paragliding. Is that what that's called? They're down there. Well, it's a gorgeous morning. There's paragliders up there flying. This is the direction I'm going. That's gotta be Breck down there. And I'd be willing to bet that's a ski lift for Breckenridge. Beautiful mountains. And you can see Copper Mountain Resort down there. I arrived at the very touristy city of Breckenridge right for the 4th of July weekend, so it was mobbed. There were a ton of people here. The bivouac, or the bivy as it's called, is the one of the nicest hostels I've ever stayed at. That's Paco, the dog. He was awesome. But this felt like a, an expensive big ski resort lodge thing. That was my bunk. Um, and, but it was still all under $60 a night, and you had this nice big communal room with a full kitchen and everything. So I did have a good time. Yeah, a hot tub. Are you kidding? I had a good time in Breck, but I was looking forward to getting back out on the trail. It is July 3rd. I believe that should be my 64th day since I've started. I just left Breckenridge this morning. I had a pretty nice stay. The town's a mob scene because of the 4th of July weekend. Um, and just the layout of the town and kind of like the feeling I got from it. A little bit too touristy for me. Like. Pagosa Springs still for me really hit a sweet spot of like lots of stuff to do but not crazy crazy tourism. Maybe on the 4th of July weekend it is too, I don't know. But anyway, um, I will be finishing up the overlap of the CDT and Colorado Trail. There's been a ton of Colorado Trail hikers that have started in the last week and I'm passing well over a dozen of them <laughs> um, in the last couple, you know, per day for the last couple days. So. That's not necessarily a bad thing, um, but being a holiday weekend and stuff, everybody's got the days off, so there's mountain bikes all over the place out here, so I can't listen to my audiobooks, because uh, if they come up behind me or something, I won't hear them coming, so. The weather is beautiful. Tomorrow I should be going over Grays, which is the highest point on the Continental Divide Trail, and I plan on trying to do a really big day today to get me close, so that way I can go up and over it and down it in the morning um, and try to avoid those infamous afternoon Colorado thunderstorms that supposedly happen very regularly in July and they haven't really happened to me yet so I'm sure they're coming.